unconventional things at very unconventional places. And it's a story about how their work is challenging some basic assumptions we have made for a very long time about salt and our body. We all know it. If you eat a lot of salt for a day or two, you will drink a lot of water. Why is that? Because that salt somehow traps water into biological systems. So if we store sodium in our body, we store water. That's the knowledge. Simple. But is it good enough? Is it enough to study a human being for a day or two and draw a conclusion? Would the same thing happen if we would study him for a week or a month or a year? And what on earth does all that have to do with a trip to Mars? Well, think about it. How would you measure salt intake in a human being over a long period of time? Can you calculate how much salt was in your breakfast in the morning? Or will be on Christmas Eve? No? Me neither. What would we need to really control salt intake in a human being? We would have to lock him in a box, <laughs> control all the food that goes inside the box, and measure all the urine that comes outside. And we would have to do that not for a day or two. We would have to do that for weeks or months or perhaps a year. And that would not be very kind. <laughs> but perhaps, perhaps there are already some people who have been locked into a box with controlled food intake, collecting all their urine. And now you got it. On a trip to Mars, we should study salt metabolism on a trip to Mars. Now, as you know, there is no Mars mission on the way. So we had to turn to the best thing available on Earth, and that was in the northwest of Moscow at the Institute of Biomedical Problems of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Here you see 12 young men standing in front of the Mars 500 simulator in the Institute. And now, believe it or not, these 12 men agreed to be locked into this box and simulate the flight to Mars. And suddenly, the impossible was possible. These guys would know exactly what they had for breakfast, what they had for lunch, and what they would have for dinner. And we would know how much salt they ate, not for a day or two, but for weeks and months well, and a year. Why a year? Because a flight to Mars will take 520 days. This was our one in a million chance to find out whether common sense really made sense on the long term. What did we, and what did we find? Well, when we studied them on a high salt diet for a day or two, we found everything that I had learned in a textbook. They accumulated salt and they accumulated water. But when we then continued and measured the excretion for a week and for months, something spooky happened. These guys accumulated salt, but we could not find any signs of water overload. So somehow the salt had not trapped water. Talk about a shock. This overturned everything that I had learned in school, and of course nobody believed it, but we believed in our data. <laughs> and that led us to all different kinds of questions. I had always used a blood sample to measure sodium, but you know, this blood sample wouldn't tell me anything. 
I would know a concentration, but I could not see the salt in the body. And the question was, where were these salt stores hidden? So we needed something to see the salt in the body. And the blood sample, of course, would not help. So we found an answer to this question through a method called magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. With these big machines you may have seen in a TV show or in a hospital, you can measure some elements in the body. And if you now change the mode of this machine into the sodium mode, then you suddenly can detect the hidden sodium stores in the body. Look at the picture of this 85-year-old man his tissues shine white. He's storing sodium. Today we know that we all store sodium. We store it in our skin and in our muscle. Some of us store more sodium. We all store it with age, but those who store more of it have more likely arterial hypertension or diabetes or infections. So sodium storage was the first mystery these Mars guys help us solve. But another was yet to come, and that was about salt and thirst. In the short-term world, everything makes sense. I got always thirsty when I had my grandmother's chicken noodle soup. And the bartender, of course, knows the trick about the salted peanuts. They will make him sell more drinks. But again, there's a problem of time. Granny and bartender only observe for one to two hours what happens. But they, of course, do not know what happens for weeks or months. So we thought that our Marsonauts perhaps could give us a question to that too. And they delivered yet another spooky finding. Because when we had them on a high salt diet, not for a day or two, but for weeks and months, these guys drank less. And they produced more urine. So how on earth can that be? How, where did the water come from if they didn't drink it? We looked into their kidneys, and we found that when they were on a high salt diet, there was more sodium in the urine, at least one thing that was in line with the textbook. But we also found that the water was somehow a little bit hesitant to follow the sodium and go down the tube. So what was holding the water back? This something that was holding, holding the water back was urea, another substance. So the, so, the, so the urea was holding back the water in the kidney, the salt was excreted, and that meant that urea was used to conserve water when salt intake was high. So salt intake is associated with water conservation, not water excretion, as we always thought. But that now led to yet another question. Urea is produced by the liver. So was the kidney really left alone with all these problems with high salt intake? We could not answer these questions in our Marsonauts because we could not study their liver in the box. That's why we turned to mice. And when we fed mice a high salt diet, indeed the liver started producing more urea to give it to the liver so that the liver, uh, to give it to the kidney, sorry, so that the kidney can conserve water. But that now led to the next question. Because the liver needs a lot of energy to produce the urea. Where did this energy come from? Now, the answer to this question is simple, right? If you need more energy, you, you eat more. When we had our mice on a high salt diet, they ate 20 to 30% more food. So what do we learn from that? And what does that mean for our daily lives? Well, before the Mars 500 crew, Everything in my world was simple. I only, when I was talking about salt, I was only thinking about how much sodium and how much water was excreted by the kidney, and that was all that there was to know. Now we start to understand that on the long term, this is about energy metabolism, because our body needs energy to produce the urea to hold back the water when the salt is excreted. 
And that leads to something like, we do not know how to call it yet because all that is so new, but this is something like, like stress eating. And this stress eating might be perhaps even more important than the well-established connection between salt and blood pressure because it puts you on track to obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome. So this new connection between salt and energy metabolism leads me to the last two questions of this talk, if I may. What happens if you take away the extra calories? And needless to say, if we took away the extra calories when mice were on high salt diet, they lost weight because the calories didn't come in. But they didn't take the calories from fat, they stole the energy from muscle. Why was that? Because muscle protein not only is a great energy reservoir, it also contains a lot of nitrogen. And nitrogen is an essential component of the recipe that the liver uses to produce urea and help the kidney conserve water when the salt is excreted. And now the last question about our Marginauts, this last mystery they gave us. How is it possible that you drink less and make more urine? when you're on a high salt diet. Well, what they did is that they transferred fuel into energy, urea, and water. And if you produce more water in your body, you drink less, simple. So that's actually the story I wanted to tell you about the Marsonauts, but there's one thing I do not want you to take away from that. If you are on a diet, you please do not go home tonight and eat more salt <laughs> and hope that you will lose more weight. Well, first of all, you will be powerfully hungry and you, you perhaps will hate me for that. Second, the hormonal changes that all this induces are really not, not really healthy. And third, and that's perhaps the most important thing for you now, you won't take the calories from the fat. You will lose muscle mass. And that's not the kind of weight loss you've been dreaming of. So don't do it, even if you're heading for Mars. Thank you.